Michael was a 12-year-old boy who lived in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. He lived with a small family of three, since his father passed away when he was seven. In his middle school, he was in the cryptozoology group. In fact, he was the leader of said group. He and his five friends, Ashley, Ben, Zach, Callie, and Josh, would meet in the science classroom and discuss different cryptids and urban legends. Every week, they would choose another cryptid to discuss, and another member to research it. They quickly flew through the list of cryptids easily, from the Ahul to the Zanzibar leopard. Eventually, in December, eventually, in December, they were at a loss of cryptids to research, until one member learned of another local legend, the Mothman. He told everything that he knew about him, and one by one, this cryptid grew on They argued over who should study it, when Michael, being the leader, announced that everybody would do this. It's the cryptozoology's final cryptid. He read everything he could about Mothman, and through reading the witness reports, found a possible hideout for it. Using all of the group's funds, they convinced the principal to give them a field trip to the West Virginia Ordnance Works, an abandoned World War II TNT factory. The bus driver drove seven miles away from Point Pleasant, and told them to come back if anything goes wrong, and to stay together. The six kids jumped off the bus and slowly walked towards the building of the Ordnance Works. Along the way, each kid muttered to each other about how the air smelled like smoke and how freezing it was. Michael was the most excited. This was going to be amazing. He daydreamed about walking into the mysterious looking building, being stared at by Mothman sitting up on a perch, then discovering Mothman was friendly and riding him far away on a breeze. He smiled at the thought, but was interrupted when he saw he was at the door. He nearly squealed with excitement as he opened the door, and held it for his friends to come through. They crept through the doorway, with their shoes making a dragging sound against the dirty vinyl floor, and came to a stop once they were all inside. Michael let go of the door and walked forward in silence. Everybody jumped when the door made a loud, echoing slam that seemed to echo for hours. The building was sturdy inside, with brick walls, broken machines here and there, and one shattered window, which was the only source of light in the dimly lit building. They stood there in silence for a second, before Michael broke the silence by taking a step forward. He looked back at his friends, and they followed his lead and came forward. They walked through the large main room, dragging their feet as they walked. Ashley glanced out a window, and saw what looked like a raven or a crow caw and then fly away. She sighed, letting a cloud of warm air come out of her mouth, and looked ahead. Michael opened a door for them to go through, atop a set of rusty stairs. though. Josh insisted that they go through another door, just underneath the stairs. Ashley insisted yet another door. Zack, fed up with the bickering, suggested that they split up into groups. Zack went with Josh, Ashley went with Ben, and Michael went with Kaylee. They agreed to meet up they agreed to meet at the bus if anything went wrong. Michael grabbed the flashlight out of his backpack and turned it on. He nervously smiled at Kaylee and continued on through the door. He opened it and closed it as he entered, which, again, made an echoing slam. They crept down the hallway, which was pitch black aside from the flashlight. They felt uneasy, as they couldn't see anything four feet away from them. How are you holding up, Kaylee? He asked, to lighten the mood a bit. Fine, but something's off. Uh, what do you mean? I mean- She was cut off by the sound of the door slamming. They quickly spun around and heard slow, scraping steps coming closer. They stared in horror and silence as the steps grew louder and louder. Two dim red lights appeared down the hall. Haley wanted to ask what they were, but her throat seemed to swell shut. The lights grew brighter and bigger as the footsteps became louder. Michael felt a chill run down his spine, and he stepped backwards nervously. There was one last step, then they stopped. The two huge red lights seemed to glow. Michael's arm twitched as he slowly raised the flashlight to the lights. It shone to reveal a humanoid creature with glossy feathers. Its feet were scaly and green with long black talons that seemed to dig into the ground. Its shoulders were about one foot taller than its head, and were tipping with long black wings. And its head, it, it seemed to push down into its chest and it had two huge red eyes, as big as dinner plates with no pupils and no light, yet they still seemed to glow. Its mouth appeared to be either missing or covered by feathers. The two children stared at the creature, too scared to move. 
The creature stood there, motionless and expressionless. Michael attempted to whisper run to Kaylee, but all that came out was a loud squeak. Upon hearing this, the creature's eyes seemed to become even brighter, and it let out a horrible otherworldly screeching noise, which reminded Michael of a mix of a scream from a horror movie and an ambulance's siren. It unfolded its wings and charged them. Michael screamed at Kaylee to run, grabbed her hand and tried to run, but Kaylee wouldn't budge. Her face was stuck in an expression of sheer terror, and she was staring the creature in the eyes. Michael tugged on her arm, but she wouldn't budge. The creature was practically on top of them, so Michael sighed and let go. He ran down the hall, gasping for breath. He heard a short scream, lasting only for a second, then heard nothing. The creature's eyes shone through the darkness and turned toward him. He screamed and sprinted down the hall. Thoughts raced through his head about what might happen if he was caught, and how he would escape. He looked around desperately for an exit or hiding place, but to no avail. He glanced behind him and saw it gaining on him, and fast. He felt his stomach turn and sweat roll down his face. He turned forward again and tried running faster. As he ran, he saw a door on the side of the hallway. Michael gasped, Michael gasped and ran ahead. He stopped quickly at it. Locked. He looked to his left and saw the eyes getting closer and closer. He screamed again and frantically turned the knob back and forth. Click. The door opened. He ran inside and left the door slightly ajar. He backed away from backed away behind a table in the room and prayed it wouldn't find him. He heard the scraping footsteps again, and heard them slow. He held his hand over his mouth so it couldn't hear him. He was so terrified, he was so terrified that tears rolled down his face. Through the blur of tears, he saw there was a hand mirror in the room. So he held it up to see behind him, so he didn't have to move. There it was. He yelped and turned around to see its red eyes gazing down at him. He screamed, NO! as the silent creature leapt over the table at him. Afterwards, when it was time to leave, Zack, Ben, Josh, and Ashley met outside in the snow, and asked each other if they'd seen Michael or Callie. Nobody had, so they sighed and kicked their feet off of the ground. They were interrupted by a sudden, ominous screech. He stopped sighing, and turned to look at the building. The creature flew out of the shattered window. As it flew, it twitched and writhed and fell and rose. It flew as though it were broken. It flew directly over the kids and flew over the kids' heads. Something fell off of it as it flew by and landed in Ashley's hand. It was a drop of blood. It flew up into the sky and it hasn't been seen since. Mothman, Ben mumbled, cometh. Where is it now? Please, dear listener. Don't think about it too much.